Greetings friend! In this tutorial I will teach you everything you need to know about Sudoku empty rectangles also known as ERs. I'll define empty rectangles to include the two categories of empty rectangles. I'll give you an easy way to remember the components of an ER and also how to spot and make the most candid eliminations possible with them. Click below for puzzle and video links and with that it's solving time. Our first example comes from Cracking the Cryptic and you need to find an advanced strategy if you want to get past this point in the puzzle. So let's consider where the threes can go. If you look here in block three you might notice because of this three a three can be in these three spots, right? Also notice that there's only two places for three in row five. So I'll color that like that. So let's look at something here. If a three was right there, then this couldn't be a three, and that cell would be a three, and you couldn't have a three right there. Okay, great. If you put a three right here, you couldn't have a three right there either. If you put a three right here, same thing. This couldn't be a three. That would be a three and then this cell cannot contain a three, and I'll put that in red. So no matter what cell you put a three in this block, this cell right here cannot be a three. And Simon Anthony did this in the original video, and this is called a Sudoku empty rectangle. So let's break it down. An empty rectangle is a rectangle of single digits where one corner of the rectangle is a three by three block, and another corner outside the block must be eliminated. We will be removing a three from this cell. There are three components to an empty rectangle. First, there's the empty rectangle shape, which you will find in the three by three block, and it has to be a particular type of shape. The second component is a conjugate pair. That's when you have two possibilities for a canon. And then the third component is the empty cell, the cell that must be that can it must be eliminated from and it's also where empty rectangle gets its name. So I'm going to cover these one at a time. And if you're new to the channel, I welcome you to Smart Hobbies. Like and subscribe if you want to turn your passing interest in Sudoku into a fun and enjoyable hobby. So let's talk about the empty rectangle shapes. I moved into Sudoku Maker where I load most of the puzzles for you and I have a nice blank canvas. So this is the, probably the hardest thing to see are these empty rectangle shapes. And so a definition of an empty rectangle shape is when a single candidate is restricted to exactly one row and one column in a block. So let's talk about this. This is an empty rectangle shape. And the way you test to see if it's an empty rectangle shape and say it's a shape of threes, is what I call slice and dice. If you can slice down the column and across the row and eliminate all the candidates, and in each slice and dice you cover at least one of those candidates, you know you found an empty rectangle shape. So by going down the column, I get all three in the column, but I didn't cover those two cells. Then going across the row with the dice, I got at least one other green cell. In this case, you got two. That makes it an empty rectangle shape. Now, you can remove some of these possibilities and you still have the same shape. So if you remove from right there, you'll notice you still got the slice and the dice picking up at least one candidate with each one. And I'll remove these threes, but you understand we're talking about a single candidate here. If you remove another cell, let's say you remove it right there, and that's not possible, you still will slice and get at least one green and dice and get at least one green in both of those. That's an empty rectangle shape. If you remove this cell, your slice and your dice gets at least one possibility, one candidate there. So this is a valid empty rectangle shape with just these two candidates. Now, however, if you remove this cell, you'll notice with your slice, you get nothing. 
And then with your dice, you get both cannons. And if you try to slice here, it won't work. You slice and because you can get it all within one dice there, right? So you're just doing the dice without the slice. You got it. You have to be able to do the slice and the dice for it to work. All right. Other common shapes here is remove that. You'll see a lot, which is kind of like the L shape or the backwards L shape. And I'm not going to show every single shape, but just some of the common things that you'll see. And obviously, with a slice and a dice, you get all of it right there. And you can remove, you know, one of the tips, and you're still slicing and getting at least one cannon and dicing and getting cannons, okay? You can remove yourself from right there. Same thing, still slicing and still dicing. And you can remove either one of these cells. You're still going to have an empty rectangle shape because you slice one and you dice. And you see you're covering at least one of those cells each time. Where it wouldn't be in play is if you got rid of both of these. And you have it like that. Because, again, if you can slice it all in one, then it's not an empty rectangle shape. If you had a green cell up there, even though there's three cells, not an empty rectangle shape. You cannot do that. Okay, and then the last one you'll see commonly is maybe this kind of T-shape or an upside-down T-shape. Same thing. You got one good slice, one good dice. You can remove that cell, and it still works as an empty rectangle shape because you're moving through the can. It's outside. You're going to basically go outside of the column or the row, and you'll come back in You know the, the opposite. So you're going to come out you'll be coming back in this way. That's why we'd slice and dice. You can remove that. And this is still a nice empty rectangle shape. See how that works. And you can remove one of these. And you'll see you still slice and you dice. That works out just fine. What you can't do is if you remove that and you had this say again, because you can dice and get both all the cells, that's not a valid empty rectangle shape. Even if you go, oh, hey, right there, and then right there. Nope. If you can do it this way, it's not one row and column, it's not a valid shape. So now let's move on to the second component and go back to our puzzle. Okay, the second component is a conjugate pair. If you remember, a conjugate pair just means that there's two possibilities for a candidate in a row, column, or a block. Or it could be two possibilities within a cell. The idea is a three's got to be here. If it's not here, it has to be there. Okay, that's all. Conjugate pairs are the backbone of advanced solving. You see them in so many strategies. So when you find one of these, you know you're on to something here. And so that's the second component. And then the third component is, if you imagine, that, you know, this is one part of your rectangle. That's one corner. That's one corner. This last corner is the one that you can't put that candidate in. And you saw why, right? No matter where we put the three here, because of this conjugate pair, that gets eliminated. And this is uh, the first category of empty rectangle. Uh, and I call this a symmetrical empty rectangle. And the reason being is you could put three back there, but you could go the other way. You might notice that this is a conjugate pair of threes. The three can only be here and here. So you could come out this way, connect to this conjugate pair, and then go over, and where you're going is where the column comes out and meets that cell. And you can eliminate a three from right there. This could be your kill zone. So you could have come down this way and eliminate a three from there, or go out this way and eliminate the three from right here. When a symmetrical one, it doesn't matter which way you go, it's going to re result in the exact same solve. And you will get a symmetrical empty rectangle if you have conjugate pairs in both directions. What you'll see is you're going to eliminate from both of these cells, and because of the conjugate pairs, you have to be able to solve right there for your candidate. So you'll be able to solve for three right there and move on to the rest of the puzzle. Something else I wanted to point out here is that empty rectangle often can be substituted for other advanced strategies. And so you might notice, if you look in this puzzle, that threes can be here and here. And in column seven, they can be here and here. And that forms a skyscraper. Okay, you got the same base here. They're in 
different rows in the same three by three bands. And so you would be able to know that you could eliminate a three from any cell. Let's use both these. You could eliminate a three from there and from that cell right there. And you get the same situation. You'd end up being able to solve this cell for a three. Uh, it's very common with finned X-wings, very common with two-string kites, and with these skyscrapers to also be able to apply the empty rectangle. In our next example, I'm going to show you the second category of empty rectangle, and it's much more common than this. For my second example, this is from Kraken the Cryptic as well, and it shows a second category of empty rectangle. Look at where the threes can be in this puzzle. It can be in those spots, it can be in these spots, it can be here and here, and these cells and this cell. Something else you may notice as I mark this is because of this 3, 7 naked pair, you can eliminate threes from there. And because of this 3, 7 naked pair, you can eliminate threes from there. Do you see any empty rectangle shapes? And you want to kind of test this. Uh, one thing I need to make note of is this is an empty rectangle shape. You can slice and dice and get at least one cell. But if you come down to this cell, this is not the kind of conjugate pair you're looking for. And the reason is the three and seven are in the same block. You got to have the conjugate pair be in two different blocks for it to work because you have to come back in on a cell that's outside the block. So this is not going to be a good empty rectangle for what we're looking for. I mean, you could go slice and dice and, hey, connect to here, but you'll notice that this cell does not connect to conjugate pair because there's three possibilities in column nine. So you have to keep looking around to see if there's a good, valid, empty rectangle. And we do have one here. Look here in block six. If you slice, you get this cell. If you dice, you get this cell. And you notice if you come up, you can connect to a conjugate pair. Right there, only two possibilities for three. And then come back down where it meets the row and you have your kill zone right here. And so you can eliminate a three from this cell. Now, this is an asymmetric empty rectangle. And the reason I call it asymmetric empty rectangle is if you try to go out the row first and connect to here, you'll see because there's three possibilities for a three, you don't have a conjugate pair. And so you cannot make the connection you need to make the eliminations. When you can only go one way with the empty rectangle, it's an asymmetric empty rectangle. By solving this, you'll notice by removing a three from right there, you now have a claiming pair of three. So you can remove a three from right here and continue on with your solving. Now challenge yourself to spot the empty rectangle in this next video. Thank you so much for watching.